And uh, Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the SCB Steelers podcast presented by Deck Roofing of South Florida. And we've had some drinks, everybody. Um, we've had a few. We've had a few. You betcha. Uh, it is uh, the last show of February. Uh, the next time we come to you, it'll be wow. March. So we are making our way. And uh, we know that all of you just enjoyed the riveting USFL draft this week. <laughs> And uh, probably we? need a break from all that excitement and need to listen to some Steelers talk. And that's what we're here for. Uh, joining me are Ryan, Ian, and Ben. And gentlemen, I hope you are all well on this fine, fine winter evening. A um, few things uh, to discuss, the most notably uh, because it happened just not too long after we recorded the last show was the Steelers brought aboard a guy named Brian Flores, who everybody, I think, has probably heard of Mr. Flores in the last few weeks, if they hadn't Once previous to that, uh, as the head coach of the Dolphins and former uh, coordinator in New England and so on and so forth. But, uh, Ben, let me start with you. Uh, what does Flores immediately add to the Steelers' defensive uh, – well, I'll just say to the Steelers' defense – well, you've got an accomplished defensive coach who was available, and the Steelers had a need, clearly, with Keith Butler retiring. Um, obviously, Terrell Austin's going to be the D.C., but they need another linebackers coach. Well, previously, Keith Butler was handling the outside linebackers mm -hmm. as well as being the defensive coordinator, so uh, acting as defensive coordinator. So they bring him in kind of in the same role Keith Butler and Terrell Austin had before, senior defensive assistant, coordinator of waiting, if you will. Mm -hmm. So he's going to have more input than, you know, an ordinary position assistant would. That's the implication. Um, you've got Denzel Martin, who's still going to coach the outside linebackers. Mm -hmm. You've got Jerry Olsavsky, who's still going to coach the inside linebackers. And you've got this guy who's going to bring his own – brand i'm sure he'll put some twists into the d he'll have some input um i don't think he'll be calling plays or anything mm -hmm. but i mean basically I, I i think people are reading too much into this it was just there was a coach who was available um he's he's way overqualified for the job yeah he was willing to take it yeah. and they went really well <laughs> yeah we should hire this guy then i mean uh, simple to me it's friggin' no brainer yeah, I agree. And, and according to most of the reports, the way it went down was he he was speaking with Mike Tomlin, um, kind of on an advice type phone call. And yeah. uh, you know, Mike Mike Tomlin's not an idiot. Mike Tomlin's like, hey, you know, you're not coaching. What do you think? And I mean, the worst thing Brian Flores can say is no, and and he didn't say that. And so here he is. Um, you know. Ryan, they've already got, you know, Jerry O, Denzel Martin there. Um, I mean, what you just look at the wealth of knowledge that Flores has working under Belichick for as long as he did. I mean, what do you hope that he brings in there and does maybe a little bit differently for those linebackers? Yeah, I, I first of all, I, I I would be stunned if the rush defense doesn't improve. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think the defense once again will be uh, the better side of the ball. I think that uh, anytime you can add a coach, uh, especially one that was pretty successful with the Miami Dolphins, um, and I don't even think he should have been fired. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously, he will let will let. We'll let the reasons for that and and everything that unfolded after play itself out through the yeah. legal system. Um, but you know, I, I always say this to any anybody that Bill Belichick likes uh, and trusts and has on staff. I think you're a good coach, and I think that you know Mike saw Mike to, Mike Tomlin saw it as an opportunity. You know, it would probably did start as just a hey Mike, you know, you want to bullshit, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and it just turned, Hey, you want a job? And he's probably like, well, you know, okay, yeah, whatever, you know? And so, I mean, you got, you got, you know, Terrell Austin, you have Brian Flores, you have Jerry Olsaski, former Steeler linebacker. And then, and mm -hmm. I think, you know, Denzel Martin, you mentioned Denzel is a great guy. Uh, he actually started as a scouting intern, similar to how Brian Flores started his, hit his career. Excellent. Uh, the Patriots. So like Denzel, he's getting into the coaching thing. So like, he's probably 
as happy as can be. Um, but, you know, not just about the coach or anything. I, I just want to say this. You know, I, I say this, Mike Tomlin, talking the talk, walking the walk mm-hmm. um, when it comes to the Rooney rule, um, which, which is great, which is what every team should be doing. But, you know, I just want to give credit to Mike Tomlin and also give credit to the Steelers organization for yeah. for bringing a guy on board that, you know, they, they don't – can't talk about litigation, but mm-hmm. this isn't the first time that the Steelers, you know, obviously they had to deal with issues when it came to Ben Roethlisberger and, and crisis when it came to, you know, signing a guy like Mike Vick. Yeah. Um, yeah. We got a lot of, we got a lot of angry phone calls from, from folks and, and understandably so. Um, but it just goes to show that the Steelers are not afraid to bring somebody into the fold that can help them win football games or help mm-hmm. them coach win football games, even though there might be, um, you know, pending legal action or just, you know, they're, they're just, they're just the hot topic at the moment. Mm-hmm. So there's the Steelers in that organization for bringing right. in that guy, because I, be, I let's be honest, Brian Flores is a really, really good football coach. And I bet you there were a lot of teams that are just like, you know what, I don't want to deal with this right now. And, yeah. and I don't want to deal with the questions, but you know what? Good for the Steelers for doing it. It, it. I agree, and they did. They did flat out say, "Look, we know that he's pressing forward with his his lawsuit. That's not going to deter us from from having him as a coach here. So we'll work with him. He'll work with us, and and go from there." Um, Ian, there was a lot of talk initially that this would be the type of guy to come in and really change uh, Devin Bush. He, you know, he'll get Devin Bush back to playing the way he was before he got hurt. Uh, it, is it? that easy is it possible is it just people being idiots on twitter i mean what what is it it's it's possible um it's probably not easy but i mean let's be honest the only person who can get devin bush to play up to devin bush's potential is devin bush right right? like yeah you uh, you, the general, you, you as a player have to have that want, that internal drive to want to be better and to improve and to and, and have the willingness to go out there and put your body on the line. I mean, that's a lot of what I saw from Bush this year was that he looked tentative. He looked afraid to get hurt again. He looked afraid yeah. to make hits again. I and, agree. you know, the best coach of all time could give him the best motivational speech ever, but if he's not willing to put himself out there and put in the work and do it, it's not going to stick. You know, at at this level, all of these guys are incredibly, insanely talented. They're incredibly athletic, you know, all that. And and the the difference, honestly, between a lot of guys that make it and guys that don't is what's between the ears, you know, how, how intelligent they are and how willing they are to do work and, and put in the work. I mean, even, you know, for all the shit that he did later in his career, early on, Antonio Brown was always the hardest worker on that team. Oh, like he put in a still ton is a of really incredibly time. hard worker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, he he didn't get to be where he was, you know, at his peak just on talent alone. Like he he right. put in a lot of work. And, you know, to get to that next level, it takes a lot of work. So Devin Bush has to be willing to do it. Can Flores do it? Yeah. I mean Flores took a dog shit roster in Miami and put together two winning seasons, which they hadn't had back to back winning seasons since I think Marino, right? Was the quarterback. Um yeah. so yeah. So you know Flores is a, a very good coach and I, I don't really have anything to add to what anyone else said other than I'm a big fan in general of hiring former head coaches to assistant coaching roles. Um because I think once a guy has had that perspective of kind of everything that goes into coaching an NFL football game from the inputs right. you need from your assistants, the the draft process, everything else, they're better able to understand their role as an assistant and how that fits into the bigger picture. Um, you know, when you bring in guys that might be fresh out of college or, or something else to assistant coaching roles, mm-hmm. or when you start promoting them up through the ranks, yeah, you can get some really good guys and, and guys so that have success. you're but- saying you'd like to hire – Ben McAdoo or Adam Hayes. Okay, listen. Ben McAdoo is actually the only current offensive coordinator in the league that was a former head coach. So uh-huh. it's actually much more prevalent on defense than it is on offense. Oh. Um, what about what about Adam Gase? Would you bring no. him in? Yeah. Th- 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 this no. is my point. So it isn't just a qualify. I agree with you from the standpoint that 
former head coaches are people you want to look at, but yes. I don't necessarily think you should just snatch up a coach because he's a former head coach. Because if guys don't want to play for him, if he has if he's run his shitty schemes mm-hmm. like Adam Gase and, and right. Ben McAdoo have, nah. No. No. No, but there, there's a difference between like guys like that and and maybe a um you know like a Doug Marone who wasn't a really yeah. good head coach in Jacksonville but is a really Great good offensive, offensive line, line yeah, coach. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like a Bill Callahan who's had a couple stints yeah, yep. as an interim head coach and is Great a offensive great offensive line coach. line coach. I agree. But I wouldn't put I wouldn't make Bill Callahan my offensive coordinator, but I would absolutely yeah. make him my offensive line coach. So or it's, run it's game coordinator. Of, yeah, yeah, something like yeah. that. Right. So yeah. so but I think also just you know, guys like that that have that experience are also, you know, especially on the defensive side, really good at being able to to step back into those coordinator roles and be highly successful. Well, and, and you look at the guys in the playoffs this year. I mean, obviously, you you a defensive coordinator for for Tampa Bay. You had a former head coach, yeah. um, Raheem Morris. Wasn't he a head coach he at one point? Coach. Yeah, he was a head coach in Tampa. Yeah. Um, so, Steve Spagnolo, who was the defensive coordinator yeah, Kansas in Kansas City, City was a head yep. coach. Yeah. Yep. Um, and it seems like there's one other. Who's the, who's the guy up in uh, Buffalo? Um, Leslie Frazier? Leslie yeah. Frazier, yeah, yeah. Vikings. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I mean, so I, I think there's definitely merit to what you're saying there, especially when it pertains to the defensive side. So <laughs> I, I'm excited what the guy can bring. Right. I would. I'd take uh, like if Adam Gase wanted to be like a QB coach, uh, maybe, but he's not going to do that. So credit to Brian <laughs> Flores. No, but credit to Brian Flores for saying, you know what, mm-hmm. I'm in a legal battle with the league, but I also love football and I love the coach. Yeah, and, right. You know, Mike Tomlin, who I respect, just right. just, just offered me a job. Sure. Yeah, I I, I think it's going to be great for both parties, and, and I agree. Uh, yeah, I, I don't no. think. I don't think he'll be around for more than a couple of years, to be honest. I don't either. I, no, I mean, someone else will snatch him up. Somebody will snatch him up. And yeah. if he does stick around for two years, everybody was celebrating. Well, if he gets a head coaching job, the Steelers get two third round picks if he stays for two years. Got to be two years. If he doesn't, yeah. they get nothing. Well, the good news on that is if he keeps his lawsuit up against the league right. and it stretches out, it'll be harder. Teams, teams might not be as willing right. to. It'll, right. it'll be harder. Just yeah. keep him right there in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the uh, before we start uh, shaking the roster down a little bit, um, just very very quickly, the the general manager thing. I, I think what have they interviewed like ten total candidates now, um, and and you know, look, it it it's you could argue they're dragging their feet a little bit. I, I think just chatting before we started recording a little bit, we we seem to all kind of be of the mindset that. Maybe this is just going to be where they don't hire a general manager and they just go Brandon Hunt. You got the personnel get side of it, uh, Omar. You you got the administrative financial side of it, and and here we go. You know, and I, you know, I, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. Um, I, I know people I talk to that just seems to be the vibe right now. But stranger things have happened, and I, I, I are you guys all kind of getting that same thing, Ben? Yeah, I, I think they're taking their time, and it, it is what it is, man. Right. I, you know, I'm not really sweating it. I this team has made great decisions on these kinds of roles historically, going back, you know, 40, 50 years. So I'm just not really gonna if, sweat it. I think if, that people are, yeah, are really invested <laughs> in how this is going to turn out, and I. These, this is a family that has decades of experience with mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. making these kinds of decisions, and I'm just not concerned. They, sorry, they know better than we do. Yeah, they just yeah. do. Ryan, whoever would, that person yeah. ends up being, I'm I'm fine with it. Would Would this be a bigger deal, Ryan, if if Kevin Colbert was just like the day after the draft was just like, thank you so much, bye bye, see ya. I mean, would this be a different situation? Yeah, or if Kevin two weeks ago was like, "I'm done," you know what right, I mean? Like, right. like Kevin, like Kevin is not going anywhere. He will have a reduced role, and whatever that yeah. means, I don't know what it is. But like to think that a football guy like Kevin Colbert is just all of a sudden uh, just going to you know just leave and never come back is crazy. Because I mean, look at look at Coach Mitch. Coach Mitch is still active with the organization. Like that's you know, so I so 
and I, and I've been, and I, you know, I've, I've been vocal about it that the Steelers need to maybe tweak that uh, Steelers need to tweak their, their MO. That yeah. doesn't mean I'm asking them to change their MO. I'm just asking them to tweak their MO. Their MO didn't see Brian Flores getting hired in that. All right. So that's right. Like, okay. okay. So what, what, the, what is their MO that you're, you're looking at? I here? just think their MO, their MO is, 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 it's hard to describe, but they don't, they don't spend a ton of, and as much as critical as I am, they don't spend money in free agency, whether they have money or not. They never really get that free agent splash. They get guys that are, that come in and are good team players, good mesh guys. Yeah. Some are better than others. So does they Belichick. Tr- yes. They draft yeah. well. Um, you know, they don't sign free. Like I said, they don't sign free agents of these lucrative contracts or anything like that. Yeah. Um, they trust the personnel that they have. They trust that the people that they have and, and, and going back to it, when's the last time Kevin Colbert's been here since 2000? Right. So we haven't had to talk about this thing in 20 years. I don't right. know. Who, who is it? Tom Donahoe? Tom, yeah. Donahoe? Tom Donahoe. Who Tom Donahoe him was, and yep. it was a pissing match between Bill Cowher and Don and Tom Donahoe. Okay. And they, so, they both offered their resignation. So both, and Dan Rooney accepted Tom Donahoe's. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, and, and, you know, and, hey man, DMR, rest in peace. He, you know, but, but, <laughs> but, but, but the point being is that like, this this has happened before, right? There's been a little, there's been a little, not only drama, but there's been, there's been chatter before. I was just a little yeah. bit too young. But I think the last time it was a lot more dramatic than this. This is just Kevin. Yeah, is like he's like, probably like, he's getting up there in age, and he's like, you know what? This yeah. travel and the grind and all this thing that goes with this, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm kind so, of done. Yeah. So so their mo is going to be they're going to keep Brandon and Omar. They're going to let them do each of their own things that they do the best, and that's it. And I say that because, like, and I know Twitter isn't real, but like the people that are, <laughs> the, the, the people that are just like, oh, we need to get Lewis Riddick in here right now. And I'm just like, listen, no disrespect to Lewis Riddick, man. He's right. a pit guy. He's a pit guy. I get it, and I really like him. I think he's yeah, I knowledgeable. I think he, I think he was good at player personnel. I, I enjoy him on Monday Night Football. But please tell me how that is in any way, shape, or form the Steelers' mo. Like that is not even guy, remotely close. The, the guy hasn't been in football in ten years, but yeah, I I yeah. do think doing your due diligence and, and talking to as many people as you can because you know you're going to take your time making a decision is a wise move. So I, yeah. I I'm not yep. criticizing it. And the other the other benefit too is that you know other teams that fired their GM after the season kind of have to get a GM and a scouting department in place before the combine at least so that they can you know start scouting players for the draft whereas you know colbert's staying on through the draft the scouts are staying on through the draft like we still have our process ideally we'd kind of you know appoint the kind of gm in waiting so that he could kind of go through some of the process with kevin and mike and and you know the coaches but like i don't think it's as urgent as you know people make it out to be no, and, and that's where I was going Ian, is that the, the urgency thing that the fan seems to have, the fans in general seem to have. Um, but I mean, just, the fans have yeah. urgency over everything. Oh, I, mean, I know. Everything. We have it over the fucking long snapper. Yeah, you know? for sure. I mean, the, the punter situation this year with Percy Harvin and all the shit he went through. Speaking Presley. People. Yeah, yeah people Presley, I'm sorry. Been... <laughs> Yeah, I do all that right. all the time, man. I, I've Percy Harvin. Hey, Percy don't Harvin's forget about uh, that too. Don't Jesus. forget about Cameron Nizialik. <laughs> roster. Who's he? What? Don't it, listen. Somebody Presley Harvin Harvard. has some competition. Okay, we're getting no. down. The, we're getting down to the wire here in a little bit to talk about this. <laughs> Cam Nizialik. Yeah, well, let's. Uh, yeah. So, what so let's. Was, what happened? What was the guy that who was their punter short term? Corliss Waitman. Corliss yeah, Waitman. Corliss yeah. Waitman. Waitman. Who, he was claimed him? by the Broncos off waivers. That's Fuckers. Right. By Fucking Denver. assholes. <laughs> He's going to punt the ball a thousand yards. In oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, that thing's going to go three miles high. Uh, anyway, yeah. hey, real quick. I mean, yeah. uh, you're listening to the SCB Steelers podcast presented by Deck Roofing of South Florida and uh, the Southern Palm Beach counties there, whether it's commercial, industrial, uh, residential, multifamily, or condos. Contact Deck Roofing today by visiting deckroofing.com. 
Hey, That's, question. Uh, does, yeah. does deck roofing um, have any quota for the number of British swear words we're supposed to, we're supposed to be introducing on each episode? Or um, I, I will. I, I'm scheduled to put in a communique to John Deck tomorrow, um, and I will ask, ask him that. I will ask him that. Um, the the deck bar uh, <laughs> does not feature a whole lot in the way of British swear words. No, uh, but that doesn't mean. Well, it, you know, it, it can. yeah, varieties of spice of life. Well, I mean, we kicked their ass in 1776 for a reason. So we didn't and in 1812, right? And talk about war, right. okay? Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, probably <laughs> true. Good point. decent idea. Yeah, we can't. I'm just saying. Um, no, we, we probably shouldn't. It's it's. We, I mean, we're like seriously on the verge of World War Three. But uh, anyway, yeah. That's uh, anyway. Let's talk personnel. Um, and we're going to start with with what you guys were just talking Fuck, about. I'm almost out of beer. You guys just <laughs> chit chat too goddamn long. We'll go, go get some more. Yeah, minutes. It's, the fridge is right over there. It's the fine. Twenty minute mark. Uh, so, Presley Harvin the third had a rough year punting the football. Uh, we find a rough out year personally. Yeah, we find out towards the end that that it's been a rough year personally. His father's in rough shape. His father ultimately passes away. Corliss Waitman comes in. Does a really good job. Everybody's like, hey, Team Corliss, keep him, whatever. Corliss Waitman can kick the living he, shit out of him. Yes. For height that's and why I, he cannot I, place the ball very well. Right. That's why I didn't say he was brilliant, perfect, or anything else. He did a good job. Um, okay. So do we feel that now that maybe young Mr. Harvin has has had this, this you know personal tragedy – it's behind him. Will he be able to focus a little bit more? Ian, do, do you think he's the guy or, you know, obviously anybody can come along if they bring along, but I mean, From, I, uh, I, I think they want him to be the guy, obviously. Yeah. Um, so not to be too much of a math nerd, but Presley Harvin, his standard deviation on his kicks was tremendous. Like his good kicks were amazing. He could boom the ball. He could spin the ball. He mm -hmm. could stick the ball at the one yard line. Like his good kicks were incredible, but his bad kicks were <laughs> awful. They were bad. Like the, the, lots of wow and lots of what? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the standard deviation was tremendous. Um, like you said, Waitman can kick the crap out of the ball, but wasn't, you know, couldn't really spin the ball or stick the ball. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the other guy that they signed is basically a, a camp leg. Um, you know, I, I think they, they want Harvin to win the job, but also, you know, punters kind of like kickers, there's a lot of them out there and you can kind of find guys to come in and, and fill in if you need to, you know, yeah. I mean, heck we want a super bowl with Mitch Berger's Mitch lob Berger, leg. Ah. My my dad and I called him the lob wedge because it was basically like you know thirty six yard punt and yeah. yeah but I mean yeah, yeah. so yeah. you know um, having a great punter like you know Seattle has had like Baltimore has had forever yeah it certainly certainly changes things it does um, it but I think I think as far as pure skill goes Har if Harvin can be more consistent then yeah he's the guy. And he can be a, a great puncher, but he just has to find that consistency. Yeah, and and the other guy, Cameron uh, uh, Niazalik, uh, twenty nineteen free some agent guy. out of Georgia. Yeah. He yeah, exactly. He's he some makes guy. the team. We'll learn how to say his name. It, right. Until then, <laughs> we're not going to. Uh, as as far as kicker, I, I think look, Chris Boswell has been spectacular. He Probably going to make the team. He had that rough year. What was that? Twenty eighteen. I think. Yeah. Excuse me. And. Um, and you know, so on and so forth. Anyway, let's talk one, about one one note on Boswell though. Yeah. This he is entering the last year of his current contract, so he may be up for a contract extension this offseason. Yeah, he is oh. a possibility for that. Um, with you know as, as consistent as he's been, if they can make a, a, a contract extension work for both parties, mm -hmm. it might not be a bad idea to go ahead and do it. Yeah, in my yeah. opinion. I, I agree. I agree. I mean, um, you get a you got a team friendly deal with a, a, a you know a reliable kicker. That's fucking huge. Yeah, I, I I mean the only complaint I would have is I I don't know that he's going to bang that 
55 yarder for you when you need it. I, I think, yeah, I mean, basically, but, uh, Boz I, I, I is Justin, <laughs> just, Bob, Boz is Justin Tucker when you shave off about 10 yards. Excellent way to put it. That, that's yeah. it. I yeah. mean, he's he's good from about 53 ish, yes, right? That's why I in, used 55, yeah, where you know. Tucker at 60, you're kind of going, yeah, he's thinking about it. He thinks he, can, yeah. he thinks he can yeah. make this. We're fucked. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, let me switch uh, to the positions that people care about. Uh, quarterback. You, know, you didn't, uh, you didn't hey, even Chris, cover long snapper. I mean, come on. Cameron Kuntz is going to be offended. I'm, I'm Christian, kidding. He's Christian. Christian. Yeah, Christian whatever his name is. That yeah. guy who, who snaps the ball. Hey, your, British swear words. If I Valley recall. and uh, Duquesne alumni. You know, I didn't yeah, say right. it in, in Ellie's accent, so it just doesn't count. I mean, and and she defines things differently too. She says things she, like, she corrected her. me for my pronunciation of twat. It's twat, twat. Like, no, didn't she like, say there's two types? It's twat and twat. Yeah, she like gave us different definitions different and stuff. I was like, what? Seriously. <laughs> I was about Fucking to say twat. something to really bring down ratings, so let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, it's actually a good, good segue. Uh, yeah, so, hey, look, quarterback position, the only guy technically under contract right now is Mason Rudolph. Yeah. And and so but, when, when Kevin Coleman Haskins says – Haskins is exclusive rights free agent. Right, right. He's so coming back. He's coming back. No, restricted just, free agent, excuse me. It just cracks me up. He's like, well, as of right now, Mason's our starter. And Steeler Nation just goes nuts. Goes absolutely nuts. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How can he say that? Oh my God, people. Ian made a wonderful meme yesterday. That was awesome. Yeah, Ian, explain your meme real quick. I, I, uh, we have a visual. I'll share the visual if we have uh, it. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Hold on one second here. Let me pull <laughs> it up. Can you share so your screen? Yeah, I, oh, yeah, I can. I can share my screen. Yes, I have to. Well, then you should share your screen yeah, for, and show for us the, the viewers meme, at God home. This was the uh, the this meme is fantastic. That Ian came out with uh, yeah after it's, Kevin uh, Colbert announced that Mason was the starter on February twenty first. Yeah, and, <laughs> and and let's let's put this into into context here too. That you know, last year they would have said that Benny Snell would have been the, the starting running back if I, at this time of the year right, too, because right. he was the only one under contract. Um, so yeah. It um, is. It's comical. Just people need to take a damn breath sometimes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, you know, all right. Mason so, Rudolph. I mean, it was, this is share your screen, yeah. Ian. Yeah. I, hold I, on. I'm getting it right now. I did. Mark has to accept it. So, mm. so the, the meme here is, uh, you know, it, it actually took, <laughs> Ryan Clark's quote of <laughs> wait 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 yeah. bring it down a little bit damn make it fit there is that better uh no no, no. all right well and we're working on it uh, uh, well it's, it, it's the it's bring it down a little bit come on it's it's the first so they can time. see the first time at okay, the bottom because yeah, we can't the... we can't see it Ian all right there we go there, there we go. go yeah it's it's the <laughs> It's the first time meme, if you're familiar with that. So it, it took Ryan Clark's quote of, you know, if Mason Rudolph is the starting quarterback in 2022, they're no longer the Pittsburgh Steelers I love. And then, you know, those of us that live through any or all of Cliff Stout, Mark all Malone, of yeah, oh, all, of God. Them, all of those guys. It was um, horrible. Yes. We're like, oh, is this your first time? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So there you uh, go. We, we yeah. posted it on Twitter. We'll post it again. Yeah, I mean, but it's it's so damn spot on. Uh, okay, so Rudolph and uh, no problem, Ian. Okay. Oh crap! Uh, I'll be right back. Okay. So so we, we we've got uh, Mason. We've got uh, Dwayne. I, I, I mean, Ryan. I I'm not even gonna ask you to to put your, uh, you know. Svengali hat on because it's February. There's trades that could be made. There's free agents could be signed. There's guys could be drafted. It's just too hard to do that. But but I mean, right now it's Mason, right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> it is early. It is obviously early. Um, but the one thing I will say that the Kevin Colbert said we're going to bring four to camp. And the Steelers always bring four quarterbacks to camp. Yes. So you got Mason. Anybody. So you yep. got Mason. You got okay. Haskins. Yep. You got Ben Roth. Not Ben Roethlisberger. You got <laughs> excuse me. I wrote that. Sorry. 
You just I, gave half Steeler no. Nation a you got, heart attack. You got Mason, Dwayne Haskins. They're going to re-sign Josh Dobbs. There's your third. Okay. So you need one more to bring four quarterbacks into camp. Now it's going to be Aaron Rodgers, man. Yeah, or it's actually going to be actually there. It's going to be Deshaun Watson, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, and Mason Rudolph. So Mason's definitely not making the team now. Definitely, right? definitely. Um. So then, whether they add that fourth, be it draft, free agency, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't uh, rookie free agent tryout. I, I don't know. I don't. Uh, right. Anyway, the point being is that. Um, I learned my lesson this week. Don't support Mason Rudolph on Twitter because Steelers Twitter gets a little dark and and, and mysterious. Uh, but well, I, was, I mean, let's. I mean, you were kind of the asshole for supporting Mason. Let's be. But honest. yeah, exa exactly. You deserved so, it. So, so for quarterback at this point, I see no surprises. I wouldn't be stunned if they. I think they are going to resign Josh Dobbs. Um, and. Yeah, and we'll see. And it's gonna listen. I know people don't like patience, Guns and Roses reference, but it's you know it's it's what it takes. And it, and it's again, we still got a couple weeks to free agency. We still got you yeah. know six seven weeks till the draft. Like, of course, Mason's the starter. If we went into the season today, it's like it's like when the Steelers are one and zero, and and it's like oh, if, if the Steelers made a playoffs, it'd be one seed. You know? <laughs> Whatever. Like, it's yeah. a good analogy. I like that. Um, Ben, what do you think about Dobbs? Would you would you bring him back, or are you better off trying to just go find some other run of the mill free agent and a, and a rookie free agent or something? I think if I'm Josh Dobbs, I don't come back. Wow. I, okay. I will say I, I agree. I, I think if I'm Josh Dobbs, I say I have a better shot of making a team elsewhere, and I leave. Um, but if he wants to come back, yeah, I I'd, I'd bring him back. Um, I would. I mean, he's he's a wonderful human being. He, and he's, he's a super he's smart guy. Fucking brilliant. Yeah. And he got I mean, traded, right? He got traded to the Jaguars, he right? Did. He right, did. right. He got they, we got they. What did they trade him for? A five, I, I think. A seven, maybe. No, nah, no, I think had it was five. a five. I thought it was it a five. five. They were yeah. desperate. They yeah. they had injuries, and and I think they got a five for him, and then they ended up cutting him, and the Steelers yep. were like, him okay, back up. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, um anyway, I yeah, I I'd resign him, but I don't know if they're going to, you know, we'll see. Um, I think they need they need to add a quarterback. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um probably, you know, preferably if I had my choice, they wouldn't trade for one. Um, don't get me wrong, you know, if if by some wild stretch of the imagination they traded for russell wilson i'd be tickled pink but that's really? a really expensive trade i yes. don't see them making right. it Huge. i just yes. don't see it happening um aaron Rodgers is a douchebag i, <laughs> I just you asked <laughs> i just it's not the whole it, it's the whole history you know it's like i i, I tweeted this this week it's like his teammates call him aloof he doesn't talk to anybody in his family. Um, every romantic relationship he has ends on weird terms. It can't always be someone else's fault. It's always it's, everyone it's, else's fault. Right. Really, dude? There's just something about that guy where I'm like, eh, nah, no. Nah, I don't, I don't, I mean, he's super talented, but, you know, he is. He, win, what, he what is a win, 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 I mean, he, he hasn't won a big game in 10 yeah, years. Exactly. Right. I, I mean, a, I hate to say a, it a like big that. Game since 2010, but and and, yeah. and 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 probably there are issues with the fact that people don't follow him. Like they go there to play with him, but then once they're around him for a while, they're like, "Yeah, this guy's an ass. I don't, I don't want to be around him." Yeah. So I, I don't think I want to add that. In my no. from my perspective, the issue for the last several years in this with the Steelers has been a lack of locker room leadership. And I see that because late in games, I don't see guys stepping up and meeting that moment. And some of the guys can just do it, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, they don't need any motivation. Cam Hayward, um, Roethlisberger, Jesus, fourth quarter Ben this year. My God, he was mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's enough leadership in the room to bring the team along in those big moments. Got to have other guys for sure. Charlie yeah. Batch. Remember that game that he Baltimore. 
Baltimore game. Yeah. When he went into the huddle and fired everybody up, do you know, he's screaming and yelling, and and, and they won the fucking game. Yep. That's what we need. And we just we need somebody to rally the troops. And I don't see Aaron Rodgers being that guy. In fact, I see Aaron Rodgers being how does Craig Wolfley put it? A divider, there, not a multiplier. Yes, exactly. There yeah. are there are adders, there are subtractors, there are dividers, and there are multipliers. And Rogers' best bet would be to just stay where he is. I agree. The, and and I oh, think it's yeah. probably what he's gonna end up doing. And basically what he's doing right now is he's he's holding the Packers hostage, <laughs> going, Hey, you know, I might stay <laughs> if you do he was this. Like, he was like, Well, I woke up, um, you know, Pat, I woke up after a you know a midsummer nap <laughs> or 13 days, and I just felt grateful. <laughs> Maybe oh, the asshole should have tried gratitude years the ago. Fuck? I literally right. like and, and he knew he knew he had everybody going. And he's oh, like, yeah, sure. well, he still why, does. Well, I don't know why anybody's making cryptic. such a big deal out of what I said, you know. I just anyway, felt fuck that guy and uh, um, going to Pittsburgh, but maybe Denver. <laughs> Love not, you, and, and, Love you. <laughs> I mean, if if uh San Francisco wants to trade Jimmy Garoppolo for like a fifth, I'm fully on board. If they want more than that, eh, if they want multiple picks, fuck you. Bye. So I don't want to commit to Jimmy yeah. G long term. We'll, we'll, we'll just sign Mitch Trubisky instead. I'm and fine with that. I wouldn't so hate that. that. So am I. I, 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 I it's fine. It's fine. He basically I, he's a placeholder quarterback for right. a year or two. I'd and trade him. Move on. I trade a mid round pick for Minshew Mania right now. That dude would be the biggest Minshew? thing. Yeah. It's for <laughs> oh, yeah, be that, that guy, dude is that guy's a leader. He I, wins some listen, games, he'd be huge. Listen, that guy, look at his stats in shitty Jacksonville. Did that guy he's better than Jalen Hurts, and they're too stupid to realize that. <laughs> <laughs> I would listen. absolutely trade for Minshew. And I'm not uh, I wouldn't but, trade much, but yeah, I'd trade for him. But, I mean, I don't want to trade. Six? I don't want to trade away draft picks this year. A six, fuck yes. Yeah. yeah. The, the way this city got behind Duck friggin' Hodges, we right. would love Gardner right. Minshew. Right. right. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Duck Duck Hodges, God bless him, was not a good quarterback, <laughs> but but he had balls. He, he did. He had he balls. Loved the way he made, the played. He made decisions quickly. He yeah. made his mistakes fearlessly. Would be the yeah. way I would put it. Yeah. Oh, hey. it, it, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, it, so, yeah, I'm kind of speechless on that one. Um, let's move to running back. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry. The, the, the Steelers, that's okay. The, the we didn't Steelers even talk right about now, why Mason sucked. Oh, for God's sake. Do I really need to go into <laughs> no, that? No, I'm sorry. We're not going to uh, do that. We got plenty you know, of let me, left. But let me say this, though. And Ben, you've you've reiterated this several times this week, and, and we've all done it in the past. Do we have criticisms of Mason Rudolph? Absolutely. Sure. But we want the Pittsburgh Steelers to win. And if he is the quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers team that wins, that's fucking fantastic in Absolutely. my book. Absolutely. Who cares who the quarterback is? I, I uh, just win games. Win games. Yeah, the quarterback not, really helps you win a lot of games. Yeah. Because he's not Ben. And well, ben, it's not just—it's not just about the fact that he's not Ben. Ben had seven game-winning drives this year. Seven. Yeah. Fourth quarter, Ben was yeah. the shit. Now. Yep. Now, first through third quarter, Ben this year wasn't very good. Mm. We'll be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, but fourth quarter, Ben was huge this year, and because he rose to moments, he he will this team to wins they would not have otherwise gotten. And right. I'm sorry, Mason Rudolph ain't that guy, and he's. I don't think he's ever going to be. I, I I tend to believe that as well. But the only point I'm making is if we're winning games and he's the quarterback, then so be it. Okay. Uh, running back. Uh, we've got several guys still in the fold. Obviously, there's a, this Nigel Harris, Harris guy. guy. He's yeah. pretty good. Seems to be fairly decent. Um, Benny is still there, as is uh, Anthony the McFarland. Jets. And, and uh, <laughs> Trey Edmonds is like, I mean, the guy has cat like nine, nine lives. lives. Yeah. yeah, he's like a cat, man. Uh, Ian. He uh, plays special teams, incidentally. He does. He does. Uh, Ian, what would you like to see happen with the running back position this year? Uh, I'd like to see us get a solid number two running back that can at least maybe play every third series or so and give Najee like a, a little bit of Caleb a break. Like a type guy. 
no, Balazs sucks. No. I was just kidding. I, more like a Justin Jackson type guy um, was the guy who's, you know, potential free agent name that I have. But, you know, you can find really good running backs in the fifth or sixth round of the draft. I mean, heck, the 49ers found Eli Mitchell in the sixth round last year. You know, Anthony and, McFarland was a four. And no, I thought he was a six. No, he was a four. No, he was early. He was yeah. earlier. Okay. Mid, well, mid. either way. Maybe you need to improve your scouting on running backs, but still, like <laughs> I, you know. I think they they thought can, he had more power that he wasn't going to be a guy that that somebody he, could take down with one arm. He yeah. is that guy, You're and right. and he, you know, they've they're giving him time uh, to to put on some weight and and be a guy who's not just elusive but has a little more power. That was um, also the weird year that we drafted two guys from a Maryland team that won like three games the whole right. year. That was. But Sean that Davis. was also, yeah, yeah. That, that was also incidentally uh, around the same time that Mike Tomlin's son committed to Maryland. So he had a very good relationship with yep. their coaches. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that wasn't Matt Canada part well, of the I was going to say, I think Canada was something? the interim. That was what's yeah. funny about that is McFarland was not well thought of by that coaching staff. Yeah. And they, and, and the Steelers drafted him anyway. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so somebody obviously gave somebody him put a, a, somebody put a good word in for him, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think his I name just, rad rhymes with Rat Manida. Uh, yeah, I, I just I, I agree with you. Um, they, they've got to upgrade that number two, and of course, yeah. Ryan. Here's my question for you: Even if they do upgrade that, will Mike Tomlin give that person the ball very often? Because as we know, he loves to ride his number one. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I don't care how they do it, um, whether that's through the draft or free agency, but they need to get a, a number two back in here that's a change of pace back because whether Steelers fans want to acknowledge it or not, Najee Harris is a great running back, but he, oh, is, yeah. not that, he is not that change of pace back, okay? No, Steelers need to get a guy in here that gets 75 to 100 touches. I tweeted it earlier this year. The Steelers were the only team in the league that had uh, that only had one running back with like seventy five plus touches. Najee had close to four hundred, and Benny Snell had a, something less than sixty. That's, That's ridiculous. Nuts. Like, think it of is. that. Like Najee. So basically, Najee was literally their only option at running back. Okay, I'm not saying you got to get a guy as good as Tony Pollard for the Cowboys. I'm looking at him because I think Tony Pollard is actually really, really good. I think he's better. I think he's than better Zeke. than Zeke, right? I think now. he's yeah. better than Zeke. I think that's the dumbest contract that the Cowboys have given out. No offense to Zeke. I think Zeke, <laughs> I, no, no. I think Zeke's really, really good, but I just I don't like that contract. But I agree. The Steelers need you to get a guy in here. The Steelers need to get a guy in here and say, listen. <laughs> I need you to give me 75 to 100 touches, whether that's rushing, receiving, and, hey, Najee, I love you. You're still the guy here, but we can't do this to you because we want you mm-hmm. to be here for the long term and not get hurt. I don't care how they do it. Just do it. Yeah. But Mike Tomlin loves to run the wheels off of running backs. He does. He does. 2017 I, draft. And, and for – and for I know Richard Mendenhall was – does it isn't it always you know sort of shown in the best that well light, loved but he was he was he was pretty good and they i mean talented as hell dude yeah noted the ball like 350 times <laughs> my first year there in 2010 yeah. and like like you like listen i i ain't gonna sit here and, i ain't gonna sit here and say like you know, you shouldn't do that to running backs, but you shouldn't do that to running backs. Yeah, like, I, agree. I agree. You're right. You're right. You, but it's but it's what the Steelers do. I I know. That's why. Like, I'm hoping that like they understand that. Like, listen, Najee. Like, because he's like he seems personable. He has a great story. He somehow did everything he did this year with that shit line. Like, like give the guy a little bit of break next year. Yeah. And get somebody in here that can switch it up. And you know what? Here's the we other thing agree. too. It's okay for other running backs to score touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 2017 I, draft. I generally okay. Go ahead, Ben. Right. 2017 yeah. draft. The Steelers burned a three on James Conner, and uh, the people on this podcast were yeah. yeah it was not real happy about that choice. Assholes. They yeah they were wrong. Incidentally, all of them. And I think we wanted a linebacker or something. I can't even remember. Probably. 
It was a while ago. Um, really, really good backup for Le'Veon Bell. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, complete. I don't want to say opposite of Bell, but he was a very good compliment to Bell. Yeah. It was, it was a change of pace, as Ryan has already pointed out. And and I agree with you. But that's that's what I would look for them to do this year is spend like a middle round pick, like a three or a four on a guy who can be a change of pace back. I think they're going to give McFarlane another shot to, to make this roster this year, but I don't know if he does. I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, if he, if he can put on a little more weight and become more powerful, maybe he does. Maybe he sticks. Maybe he doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, please end the Kalen Balazs experiment. He's an unrestricted free agent. I do yeah, know he's, he's coming back. Yeah, Please let him leave. One of the, that, that's all I have to say on this. Go ahead, yeah, Ian. Yeah. Um, so two things, actually. So one of the problems they've had in the past, regardless of who the offensive coordinator is, is that they put their running backs in the wrong situations for the wrong guys. They're throwing swing passes to Benny Snell and right. trying to run power with Anthony McFarland. Like, that's friggin' back. <laughs> no, you're absolutely stupid. right. Is yep. you The defense play, won't you, expect this. Yeah, you, you wanna, they you won't wanna care either. <laughs> play to your guys' strengths and, and not to their weaknesses. You know, they, they try and just plug running backs in and run the same plays, but you can't do that. You got you to gotta play your guys' strength. You'd be like, oh, Benny Snell's in there. We're not going to run a swing pass to our running back right now. We're going to, you know – we're, we're going to run power with him or, you know, McFarland's in, maybe we're not going to call a, you know, power double on the left side. Um, but, you know, so, so as much as I agree with Ryan that I would love and Ben, that I'd love to have a change of pace back a guy like Tony Pollard that could hit a 70 yard run. Ben showing off the red breast, which is the best whiskey ever. Yeah. Um, I don't know about best ever, but maybe not best ever. It's, it's very good. Yeah. At any rate, but, like I would take a guy like Moeldy Moore, who you could give five uh, to ten Mowelde. carries. Oh my god, that five, guy was the best signing ever. Five, five to great. ten carries a game. He's solid. You can play him on third down because he's a good blocker and he's a decent yep. receiver. Yep. And then if your starter gets hurt, he can start a game or two for you. You can give him twenty. Or, you can't yeah. give him twenty carries every game, right? But for a game or two, yeah, you can give him twenty carries and he can be solid. Like a, a Moeldy Moore type guy would be hey, perfect he's got a for ring. this team. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think we're all in agreement. I think that's the type of guy that we need um, to have there. And, and I, I, I wish I had more faith uh, in McFarland. I, I just don't. I just don't see that he's going to be the guy. But I, I hope. But I hope. Same, same. But I, I just. I mean, when that he was work. drafted, I was like, oh. That is guy. a terrible pick. I'm sorry. You think so? When he was I, drafted, I went, you know what? This guy has got. He's got I thought home run, run in terms of ability, home run you know? potential, right? Right. right. Three so Archer had home run potential, and they didn't did. use him properly. I said well, that earlier this week. It's well, a whatever. whole other episode. Three right? Archer, three Archer sucks. I'm a Mac guy. <laughs> Leave me be, Maxin. Uh, I, I that, is, to, that does bring up a good point, though. That's the one thing this offense is missing: is we don't have any home run hitters at this no, point. We don't have not, any guys that you can so give the ball good. to and we need they can those find the speed. ends. Of. Yeah. Yeah, we we need we need, we need those home yep. run hitters. Yes, we need a couple. Cause, yeah, because especially if Mason Rudolph or Jimmy Garoppolo or whoever is your quarterback, even a rookie, if if Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett or whoever it is, if any of those guys are your quarterback, you need guys that can make plays with the ball in their hands mm-hmm. and not expect the quarterback to have to throw the ball the entire way down the field. Right? You shouldn't have to throw the ball into the end zone. You should have guys who are able to catch it and run it into the end zone. From yeah, a long I hope they don't. I, I kind of hope they don't draft a quarterback at all. And I, I, I know no, I don't I'm gonna, either. I'm gonna get killed for that. But no, I, I, I agree. I, I just don't. I don't even pick it. Who's the you know the the pick of the litter, if you will? Is pick just of the litter. it's just not <laughs> nice. Thank you. It's just. I mean, they're all dogs. I'm sorry. And, um. Yeah. I I don't I don't see him being a top fifteen quarterback ever. No, I, I pick it can to me he's the most pro ready. I mean he's he, he's played under Mark Whipple. But he's got um, the lowest ceiling. Right. Highest right. floor, lowest ceiling. Right. <laughs> which which to me yeah. means if I need him, I can plug him in. He can play some games. I'm not terrified of that, but I, he's not gonna win me a ton of games. Uh, I, I just over the long haul, I don't think. Um 
but we, we won't go too much farther because pit people are all of a sudden turning us off. Um, I did really, really quick. Sorry. Derek, Derek why? Um, there's a little bit of uh, guesswork that maybe he gets Leave cut. It. You know, I, I mean, look, at this point, you might be doing the poor guy a favor. I mean, he doesn't see the the, the field on offense, and, and I don't for the life of me understand why. Ian, any explanation there? You mean that paying him $4 million to yeah. play a couple snaps on special teams isn't doing him a favor? I mean, <laughs> well, I, I, I guess there's a way you could look at it. But, I mean, Bruce Gradkowski got a great favor from this team. He made a couple million dollars a year and never had to take a snap because Ben played all those. That's you know? You're right. Um, but <laughs> backup quarterback in the NFL he actually is a did wonderful he job. It's a fantastic job. It is, as long as you're still the backup. You can make you can make between let's say three and seven million dollars a year to stand, to stand around and hold uh, that? Microsoft Surface. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, but yeah, so like I, Josh Dobbs, exactly. Dobbs is making a fine career. He's not making it. that much, but nah, well, but he's gonna go off and like <laughs> send rockets to Mars and stuff here. Before yeah, he tomorrow. doesn't need the league. Nah, <laughs> he really no, he does not. Um, hey, uh, as far as tight ends, uh, I think we're in good hands with Pat Fryermuth. Um, I think we all agree that yes. Eric Ebron has, you know, played his last snaps in Pittsburgh. He, he's going to be out. Bye. Um, Zach Gentry. Z- Zach Gentry. And, and pleasant again, surprise. I, I think Super I pleasant he's, He surprise. took a lot of abuse on, on this particular program. Yeah. Um, I mean, not really, from Ian and I. We were like, yeah, we believed in him. But, absolutely but Mark you was did. super hard on him because he's a dick. Yes. And actually, it was all of us. It was. It, yeah. I, you know, and, and I love stories like him. Not that he's turned himself into a superstar. It's that he's made himself a viable NFL player. Absolutely. Um, and and I, I think it's a, a credit to him and the work he's put in. And, and I think he's he's going to be on the roster. So, yeah. you know, now what do you do? Uh, Ryan, do you, do you just add a free agent, middle of the road free agent? Do, do you even draft a tight end? Well, uh, yeah, so another note about Zach Gentry. Uh, He will be a trivia question forever. Last pass ever thrown by Ben Roethlisberger was caught by him. That's true. true. Yep, right. What about the three-yard line? Well, if you go regular season or postseason, whatever. But, um, Uh you know, so, you know, here's what's crazy is like, uh, uh, what? If er- sorry, <laughs> if Eric Ebron didn't have so many drops with during his time here, oh god, I would, I would think about resigning him for cheap. But oh he yeah, just, but he was just Eric so he was just so many drops. He was just so career. inconsistent and like, yeah. like especially twenty twenty starting off like I mean eleven and zero like it was like oh this guy and then all of a sudden it just it seemed like everybody <sighs> took the bed. But yeah, the whole you know, the whole uh, roster. Yeah caught the, a case of the drops yeah that was and, and bad so i look at this tight end i look at this tight end group right now you got fryer you got gentry you got kevin raider and then a guy named jason sternberger from texas a&m who's a 25 year old bright young whippersnapper trying to trying to make his name in the nfl but um absolutely absolutely you have to add to that position in some way shape or form whether yeah. that's the draft or free agency um <sighs> You know, I, I think I think more than anything, and this is this is just because this is my gut feeling. I think that Mason Rudolph is going to be the starter this year, yep. and I look at that too. as that is a rebuilt O line, um, and that Jeez, also maybe includes, Jesus, and that and that is also that is also that also includes more double tight end sets, right? And so you think about Ben early in his career. You know, with Heath and Reamers Ma or Heath and Tomb, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So you mm-hmm. got Muth, but then you got a guy like you got a guy like you got uh, Gentry. But then, who's to say you don't bring in another body that is just maybe replaces Raider? I, I don't know. I, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in able bodies and and when you got tight ends that want to block and want to contribute to the run game i mean that's the other thing too who knows what we're going to see from matt canada this year this is no disrespect to ben but no, i know ben, what you mean but ben couldn't move and and, and this is no res- yeah. this, this isn't yes. as much respect to matt canada is like all of a sudden it's gonna be this amazing thing but but 
with a different type of quarterback, I don't necessarily know what the limitations are. So maybe you could write you could run three tight end sets and to try to get a yard rather than go empty on third one. I'm just saying that like I'm I'm fine with adding another tight end, and I think it would be va- very valuable for the Steelers to add a third tight end. And I would say one that's proven in this league or has experience in this league. I agree with Ryan. They need to add a third tight end because they they need the ability to run double tights and you need a reliable target in the event that one of your guys gets injured. However, my (laughs) instinct is that at the end of the 2022 season, Matt Canada is getting fired. That this is a college offense that is easy for defenses to decipher and that in the in the college ranks where the level of talent on defenses is a little, little bit lower it can be run in the mm-hmm. NFL where everybody is good it can't and um yeah okay. that, that's pretty much what i think i think it's going to be a rough year right it down folks reasons, that's one of the reasons that i'm like pretty indifferent about who starts at quarterback i mean I'm on record. Mason sucks. I would love for him to prove me wrong, make me eat those words. I would love it, but I'm really doubtful that'll ever happen. Uh, Ian, would you would you prefer a another blocking type tight end to come in, or would you prefer more of a receiving threat tight end? I think you could go either way. My my big concern right now is Fryermuth is is great, and and one of the things Fryermuth did really well was he had that sort of telepathic connection with Ben that we haven't seen since Heath Miller that like Vance McDonald didn't have it. None of the other guys had it that when, when Ben had to extend a play and make something up on the fly, Friar Muth knew what he was doing and was able to get open. Chase Claypool doesn't have it. Chase Claypool doesn't have it at all. Um, but, you know, um, but granted we're going to have a different quarterback this year. So, but being able to, to come in and, mentally think the game the same way that your quarterback does is a tremendous trait. Right. Um, that said, my my fear is that I think Zach Gentry has developed into a solid and capable number two. But if Friar Muth gets hurt, and he did miss a few games this past year, Zach Gentry is not – you cannot start him as your number one tight end. So you need – I, well, I agree for, that for we need – a game or two, can you? You could get away lot. with it. You could get maybe. away with it, but it might limit your offense a little bit. I, I right. think I think what you need in the event that, that Jack that Jack Zach Gentry is your number one is you need another Zach Gentry as your number three. That's fair. And, and if if you had a couple yeah. of those guys and they were both playing, you'd be okay. It, yeah. you, it wouldn't be great, but you'd be okay. You'd be okay. That said, there there are some, you know, since Mark asked the question, there are some of those sort of hyper athletic tight end, you know, joker type tight ends mm-hmm. that are free agents this year. Mm-hmm. You've got uh well you Robert Tanya wound up being really good in Green Bay and will probably get way too much money for us to sign. I would not yes. you know. but um, you know, Evan Ingram from the Giants, who was a former first round pick. Mm. Um, you know, OJ Howard from the Buccaneers, who was a, a former mm. high round guy. Um, yes, uh, Mike, Mike, Injury. A lot. Mike Gusecki from the Dolphins, who is another former, I think, second round pick, Penn State Penn guy. Yep. Um, you know, a, a guy who I always felt was kind of underrated, but had some, um, you know, injury issues. Will Disley with the Seahawks, that like when he played, that dude was good, but his yeah. worst ability was his availability, like he right. was hurt right. all the time. No, that's, that's the, very true. But but he's you know so and, and all those guys are still in their twenties right so if you I, I mean the Cowboys are going to pay Dalton Schultz out the out the wood the yeah, wazoo they so better yeah, yeah. Um, I mean Tyler Conklin had a really good year last year with the Vikings they're going to re-sign him so you know but like looking at some of these other guys like there's some of those like athletic type tight ends that are going to be free agents this year so you know maybe you take a shot on one of those guys um, you know I'm. If you want a more blocking type tight end guy, you can get those guys for dirt cheap. Um, but you know, if you if you want more of that receiving type, those guys are out there. And then that gives you it gives you the option of 
you know, playing those two tight end sets with one of more of a joker receiver type role and one of more of a blocker type role. Um, and, you know, you also, you know, showed your guys a little bit against injury too, that you have multiple options then. You know, one of the things that was sticking out to me watching the NFC championship game actually is the fact that oh, the Rams... David and Joku too. I didn't mention him. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. that's right. He's out there too. Um, but you yeah, know, that would Rams... really break Browns fans' hearts. I actually like that idea. Yeah. And Joku coming here. Yeah. Well, eighty isn't he number eighty five? That'd be available, right? Uh, I was just I was just mentioning about the Rams the fact that they were essentially relying on a number three tight end in the NFC title game and and that kid was coming through for him and and he was a, a very slight type of tight end and uh, you know so you do it, it's people joke about the number three guy but man you got to have somebody that knows what they're doing because uh, your your two's going to eventually be a one from time to time yeah. too so right. I I'd um, like to see Kevin Rader turn into that guy morph into that guy but I I. Yeah, I like the kid. Yeah. I don't yeah. see it. I, I love him. He's tough. Yeah. He blocks hard. He plays hard, but he's just not that guy. Right. In the NFL. Right. As Ian puts it, he's a four A player. Four A player. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, for for those who may be new to the podcast, it's more of a, a baseball term that you have, you know, your single A, your triple A, your double A guys, or your triple A guys, but then you have your guys who are Better than minor leaguers, but not quite good enough to be major leaguers. So, you know, right. four of them is the 4A players. Four A's. Uh, before we wrap things up tonight, let's talk offensive line. Um, and, and I'm just going to go before right to Before we wrap things up, we're going to go well, to offensive really line long line. segment yeah, about yeah, the offensive line. It's all right. Line. Well, hey, you know. We've got receivers, too. Holy shit. We didn't get to the receivers. God damn it. Uh, anyway. <laughs> good call out. That's yeah, a good call out right nice there. Job. Nice good job. job. The host lost his way. Uh, offensive line. Uh, that. I apologize. <laughs> uh, why? Don't apologize. Mark no, sucks. Apologize. Apologize. Mark sucks. He's wrong all the no. time. Well, no, I'm going to get another I, beer here eventually. I, I am going you probably to, should. Uh, I'm going to suspend myself I for did. the next episode. Uh, <sighs> Juwan Howard over here. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the handshake line. I Fucking see. idiot. I'm sorry. I'm bad dad. I love you all. Uh, the anyway. handshake drugs. Should uh, we do wide receiver next? We well, should. It's actually it's pretty just, easy. Yeah, we don't need to get into great well, detail. Yeah, I mean, look, you got Deontay Johnson, you got Chase Claypool He's coming back, coming back. Uh, yep, yep. And then you've you've got the Rico Bussies of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's not you know really Anthony like Miller, Stephen Sims, Cody White, Tyler Vaughns. I mean, that's it. That's you know that's what you got. Mm-hmm. Um, so what you're saying is they need uh-huh. to draft another wide receiver. Uh-huh. I am saying they need probably to draft one, and I would even suggest maybe even find one in free agency. But but Ben, I'll let you tackle that first. I think that Ray Ray is still restricted. No, he's unrestricted. He's, he's unrestricted, unrestricted, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I see Ray Ray coming back. Okay. Um. Hopefully for not a great deal of money. Um, But that leaves, you know, they're going to need a few more guys. Um, So my guess is, my best guess, is they sign some kind of a a Jericho Cotchery type guy. Well, I was thinking. You know, who who can come in and can contribute, but isn't necessarily going to be a guy who is, you know, an every down player. And they draft another wide receiver. And they are exceedingly good at drafting wide receivers. We yes, all know are. this. And yep. and it's like they it's it's almost like they wait and they're like, Well, we were gonna take a linebacker, but there's this really good value at wide receiver over here, and we're gonna snatch this guy instead. You know, it it, it, it feels like that. I agree. Because some of the picks they make, you're like, it's out of the blue. We grab this wide receiver, great value. Um, honestly, the only guy I can think of, I like the player, but he's not, he didn't quite live up to the hype uh, that, you know, they didn't, they didn't hit the ball out of the park, if you, if you will, was James Washington. That's the most recent draft pick I can think of where I'm kind of like, eh, well, he was okay, but not fantastic. He's Washington and Marcus Wheaton were very similar in their careers. 
Um, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, I, I, you know, Chase yeah. Claypool didn't have a great sophomore season. No, he did not. I believe he will bounce back. I do. I think he got a little bit of a big head after his first year. He he started feeling himself a little bit. Uh, maybe slacked off. I don't know. But he just wasn't the same guy year two that he was year one. And I, I think he kind of thought he had it all figured out. And he got a, a dose of humility. I mean, that that had to be a humbling experience. Um, he's going to have a new position coach. Yeah, uh, true. Mike Killiard's gone. Yeah. And, you know, Mike Tomlin doesn't pull any punches when he's telling people how well they're doing or not doing. Right. So, yeah. Uh, well, and, and, and let me toss this out, too. Uh, Ryan, you know, Deontay Johnson, uh, you know, the Steelers don't often extend receivers uh, into second contracts. They, they but they shoot this guy this year. Well, it, it, that's the question. Um, what's he going to demand? You know, and what are the Steelers going to be willing to offer him? Um, yeah, fifteen million seems like a steal these days for for a receiver. Uh, but at the same time, for number one, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what what are your thoughts, Ryan? Yeah, you know, there's there's layers, right? There's the fifteen millions, and then there's like the what's like twenty seven ish million. Oh God, who was it? Michael? What's like, his Cor- name? And Thomas? Cor- maybe is that like Cor- no, 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 no? It's, it's, sure, like, Cor- it's, it's it's Hopkins is a twenty seven and a half, but. Okay. There, there are Portland four Sutton. guys. There are Portland four Sutton. guys that that make t- over twenty million dollars. Okay, um, Jarvis Landry, for example, makes fifteen mm-hmm. million a year. Yeah, paying paying Deontay Johnson fifteen million a year would make him the eighteenth highest paid wide wow. receiver in the NFL. If the Steelers can tie him up for five years. Fifteen million dollars a year. I agree. They would be insane, batshit crazy not to do it. Fucking insane. And Ian knows I'm right. Yeah, you I are. agree. <laughs> you are. We've had drinks. We've no, had it's drinks. not about the fact. It's, this is math. This is not my opinion. This is math. <laughs> no, it is. It's, it's, it's NFL I'm math. With you, yeah. they would be fucking insane not to do it. Yeah. Okay, so if you can lock up Deontay. With an extension in the $15 million range, absolutely. You got Chase coming back. Do not sleep on Anthony Miller or Steven Sims Jr. I like Anthony Miller. I like both of them. I think they're good. Uh, and the, here, here's my Juju Appreciation Podcast, and I'm going to get a beer after this. Juju, <laughs> I don't – listen, I don't like that he danced on the logos. I don't like no. the TikTok shit. Yeah, that dude is not soft by any means. Oh, no. And when you no, talked hell earlier, no. when you talked earlier about veteran leadership, yep. If the price is right and he wants to come back here, yeah, make it happen if because they need a guy like that. Million a year, they need a guy Fuck. like that. And yes. then also, I would not be surprised if the Steelers drafted two wide receivers this year. The two. wide receiver class Whoa. is deep. It Kevin is. Colbert said it You're the right. other day. I believe in GMKC. I just did the cross symbol. I'm not really religious, but it just happened. My my hand started nope. moving. But anyway, Kevin I'm gonna get a and I'm getting a beer and we're we coming back. You. With it. Sounds good. Scarps, get a brew. Uh Ian, I'm gonna give you yeah. a little, you know, what if scenario here though. All right. What what if Deontay Johnson and his people come to the Steelers and and, and they want something way more than 20 or way more than 15? Excuse me. I, I mean, where where's the line? God damn you know? You, you know what you tell them? You tell him Cooper Cup's making fifteen point seven five. You tell right. him you tell right. him you tell him Devontae Adams is making fourteen point five. Stefan Diggs is making fourteen four. That you're going to give him fifteen and he's going to be happy with it. I mean, you know, yeah. I I wouldn't go I wouldn't go above. And, and the weird thing is with wide receiver contracts, right? Like you've got guys who cashed in on the free agent market, or at least cashed in on what they were doing. Like Brandon Cooks at 16 2, Tyler Lockett at 17. Tyler Lockett is good, but at 17 yeah. and a quarter. Kenny Galladay at 18. You know, yeah, like some of those nothing. contracts are a little insane. Yeah. yeah. Who's Kennedy Galladay? Yeah. What? Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but I mean, you know, since right. since I'm since I'm looking at the list and we're talking about it, 
if you want, I mean, we need a slot wide receiver, right? That's that's one thing we need, right? Because we know we know Deontay can play outside. We know Chase can play outside. You want a slot wide receiver. Yep. I would love a guy like a Jamison Crowder, who I know he's had injury problems in the past, but yeah. that dude can play and he can catch. And he's played with some bad quarterbacks, both in, in Carolina and with the Jets, and and put up some numbers. Um, you know, but but someone like a, a, a Jamison Crowder, um, and there's even some other guys who are going to be free agents this year who have played like sparingly with their teams, but shown some pretty good flashes, like. Alan Lazard in Green Bay, I guess he's a restricted free agent, but um, yeah. Marcus Vald- uh, Marcus Valdez Scanley in Green Bay also, who's like, seems like his stat line is either like it's- two catches for five yards yep. or three catches for eighty yards and two touchdowns. That like Packer he's a fans hitter. say the same thing about him. Yeah, they do. It's it's boomer bust, but like like we talked about, we don't have those home run hitters. Um, you know the the Cowboys have some really good depth at receiver that's. The, Fuck the Cowboys. Well, okay, but like Ben, would you take Michael Gallup or Cedric Wilson on the Steelers as our third or fourth option? Well, you know, Cedric Wilson, we've had some bad experience with. Oh, actually, that, that was senior, wasn't it? <laughs> That's a different senior, Cedric yeah. Wilson. Thank you. <laughs> it was his, it was his dad. Yeah. It was his yeah. dad. Yes, I would take them. Yes. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like the the. At, at best, if they stay in Dallas, they're the number three or four option. Like yeah. they could. You know, um, th- there's a there's a lot of decent free agents out there, um, but I think honestly, getting back to something we talked about earlier, what this wide receiver room needs right now is is veteran leadership. You know, when you when you had Darius really? Hayward Bay, yeah, he didn't necessarily contribute a ton offensively, but he brought a lot of experience and leadership that to that special teams tackle though. When yeah, he was chasing. Oh my god. Yeah. At any rate, my point is he brought a lot of, you know, leadership to that receiver room. He did. That having someone that doesn't cost you a ton of money, but can kind of show the young guys how to do it might be a good thing for, I think that's, for that receiver room I agree. in I a think free that's agent. Coming. And then yep. also draft a guy. You, you, I mean, they're, yep. they're going to draft a guy in the mid to late rounds. Absolutely. They're going to draft a guy. They yeah. always do. Yeah. Yes. Guys. Yeah. I had a lot of beers. Yeah, well, that's what we're here for, and we're not slowing down because I we caught are... a buzz on the podcast. Imagine that shit. <laughs> yeah. We've we, we've had some drinks. Uh, <laughs> we've had, some drinks. We, we've had gonna, a few drinks. Yeah. We're gonna finish this fucking offense. We're Chances going to the are we've had a few line. drinks. We're, we're, we're Let's going start with center. Line. Let's start with center. Let's well, go there. That, it would make sense to start there. Uh, ben, who who's the the center? Is the center even on this roster right now? I I fucking hope not. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I I look. Okay, in his defense, yes, Kendrick Green's defense, yes. Hand usage is completely different when you're a center as opposed to being a guard. Oh, for God's sake, yes. Okay, because you yeah. have more spacing. You, you have a greater opportunity to anticipate what the defensive lineman is going to do in front of you. It's just, it's easier to play. I, I don't know how else to put it. And yes, he'd be an undersized guard, but I think he probably, based upon what I saw last year, would be a better guard than a center. So I'm kind of hoping they move him. We'll see. Right. New offensive line coach. Hopefully Pat Meyer says, <laughs> Yeah, um, you're a guard. Yeah, we'll I, see how I, this works out. Yeah, Ryan, what, um, do you, what do you? Oh, I'm sorry, Ben. Go ahead. No, no, no. That's it. I, I just think I, I really hope that they draft or sign a center. Yeah, yeah. Ryan, what there's, do you think? Sean Mahan of... was would really be a great signing right now. Oh, huh? shut <laughs> the hell up, Sean Mahan. Mahan. Yeah, Sean Mahan. Mahan. He spent more time Mahan. on his back than he did standing up. There, I, I was just gonna say, there's a lot of free agent centers this Talk, year. Yeah. No, but, but a but a yeah. Justin Hardwood kind of, kind of a signing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That, that's what I'd I'm saying. Be, I'd be fine with that. Yeah. I love the guy Jesus. out of Tampa, man. Jensen. Jensen. He's not yeah. so old, Hart- though. I, I know he is, but that Hardwood that, wasn't that, a great center, but right. he was competent. Competent, good leader. Yeah, I I, I liked him too. I, so, uh, Ian, go ahead. If you, oh no, I was I was just gonna say, there's a lot of there's a lot of free agent centers this year and you can we you should can probably find... mispronounce jc hassenauer's name well because so he did yeah. a good job 
he did do a, he, he, he did, did do an Came admirable in to job. Finish the year strong. Yeah. yeah. So he, as how he does Ryan said, pronounce it? What's his name? Haas and Solzer. So is he? <laughs> so is he? As Ian alluded to, there there are free agent centers. There are free agent centers, but besides Green and Haas and Saucer, BJ <laughs> BJ Finney is a, uh, is an going to retire. Is he's an unrestricted free agent? He is. Uh, yeah. He's thirty years old, and God bless Benjamin Isaac J Finney the fourth, but they never <laughs> used him. Um, so. You know, uh, he's going back to the farm in Kansas, so, I think. So getting back, getting back to what Kevin said, center and guard is not deep in this draft. Okay, so it's not. I, I here's the thing, and here's my defense of Kendrick Green is that he didn't play center much. I think it was only four games in college. Four of thirty three so, starts. So then, so it's a it, it's there's fluidity, right? So. Kevin Colbert and company yes. say, hey, Mike, this guy has position flexibility. Um, he's he he was available in college. He was a starter in mm-hmm. college. Um, and maybe a, you know, Adrian Clem or whomever says, Yeah, he can play center. Well, Adrian Clem and Chris Morgan are no longer there. So nope. I'm looking at this as an opportunity for Kendrick Green to get a fresh start at center. He has a full off season working with a new coach, maybe somebody that's better uh, and more capable of coaching him into that role. He's working um, with Marquise Pouncey too. And and listen, anytime yeah. and, and here's the other thing, and there's the, there's the other thing too. Anytime yeah. you replace an all time Steelers great, whether it's Mason replacing Ben or Mike Mitchell replacing Troy or whomever, don't shit on Mike Mitchell. By the way, Mike Mitchell today got an assistant uh, coaching gig with the Colts. Uh, and good for Mike. Good for him. Listen, shout out to Mike Mitchell. Mike Mitchell is one day older than me. We both went to Ohio U. We both met as freshmen. Let me have my moment, okay? But the point <laughs> being is that is that Steelers fans get impatient, especially yep. when a player takes over at a position where a great left. So that's very true. Very so, true. I think Kendrick Green is going to work his ass off to get better. Um, I don't necessarily say that that means that they shouldn't draft the center if he's available at 20 mm-hmm. or or whenever, but I don't want to count Kendrick Green out yet. It had to be really, really, really hard um, to to go from guard to center. And also, too, the line overall was, was poop this year, so – yeah. I think he's going to get better. He's going to work his ass off to get better. So I'm not counting him out yet. But that doesn't okay. mean we they should look at options. Right, right. right. Ian, what, what what do you think? Yeah, um, they absolutely should look at options because uh, Green was not good. Um, yeah. And and I mean, I think Green Green has some ability to pull and get out in space. He has he has decent feet in space. But his hand usage was terrible. His functional strength was not good. His lower body base was not good. Um, ben, don't choke on whatever you're eating while you're nodding in agreement. There, um, you know, he, he needs a lot. Again. He he needs a lot of work technically and just to yeah. build up his muscle mass and strength. I mean, I would almost rather move him to guard where you could pull him around and just have him bulldoze people, and then draft another player like the kid from Iowa who's a more natural center um, right. or sign a center in free agency. I mean, even guys that are old, you know, you can get one or two years out of them on a free agent contract and, you know, it, it's fine. Um, you know, you can, you can get good play, but as we saw in the Super Bowl last year, as we saw in the Super Bowl this year, interior pressure just destroys an offense. And as we saw with the Steelers all season long, we, yes, interior yes. pressure destroys an offense. Yes, yes that. So you, you Especially need... when your quarterback is immobile, yes. like a Ben Roethlisberger or a Mason Rudolph who can't feel a pass rush or move in the pocket. Yes, that. So you need a center that can anchor that. And it would help if you had a guard that didn't let people just run right by him without even touching them. Trey so... Turner, fuck you, Trey. <laughs> Resign Trey Turner. Fuck him. Oh, this is going to be fun. 
Uh, so, speaking of uh, speaking of guards, I, I mean, look, Dotson uh, had some injury Murray, issues this back. year, uh, but I, I I think still got to look at Arrow up with him. Uh, I, I was very pleasantly surprised with John Laglu. I thought him as a, a a reserve was good. I think he should be able to be back in that that same format. Hope so. Uh, you know, right guard. Obviously, I think there needs to be an upgrade there. Um, you're saying Trey know. Turner sucks, right? I'm not a big fan of Trey. Just so I, we're I, all in agreement. I like there. Trey. I, I like Trey uh, when it has food on I, it. But, I thought. Yeah, I like a charcuterie, a charcuterie tray too. But charcuterie. Um, There's the word. Of the, there Trey you go. There's a word of the day. Is not really my cup of tea. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, he. Uh, I thought that Trey did a a. a Semi decent job as a run blocker, as yep. a pass blocker, he was no. fucking horrible, <laughs> terrible, not even not even kind of competent. He was as bad as Kendrick Green was. He fucking sucked. And you put the two of them next to each other. Oh my god, <laughs> what what was that shit? Jesus, man, awful. So no, I'm not in favor of bringing him back. <laughs> in case you didn't know. If they, I'm going to tell you this right now. If they don't re-sign Trey Turner, mm-hmm. just to at least help the youngins, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is criminal of the Steelers to not re-sign Trey. What? Turner. Why? <sighs> right, now, Ryan, I'm are listening. you? Go ahead. Make your are, point. Right, are you saying to He's resign? You want to talk about veteran leadership. Be- there you right? go. Veteran okay. leadership. Right. Veteran right. leadership. So, yep. so, okay, let's be real right now. Uh-huh. They're going to lose Juju, right? I They're going to so. lose Juju. So I'm looking at this offense right now, and I got Mason Rudolph, whom you all hate and everybody hates. <laughs> Najee Harris, whom everybody loves. Right. Uh, on the offensive line, the oldest, the elder statesman is going to be Zach Banner, who uh, it's probably hasn't get played, cut. who hasn't probably played. Get cut. Oh yeah, at wide receiver we have uh, Deontay, who's twenty five, or isn't a leader, or Chase, who's twenty three, and then we it got a leader, and then we got the thirty seven year veteran Pat Fryermuth. So <laughs> please tell me who on offense is going to tell somebody to shut the hell up or just. Uh, I mean, I, please tell me. I'm I agree with Trey you. Turner is I agree That's with you. It's a very you. good – he's got they a point. They need leadership on offense badly. They need they leadership do. on offense badly. However, Trey Turner cannot perform. I, you're either doing your job or you're not, and so he's not. Here's the point, though. Is I know the Steelers have money for the first time in ever, okay? Yeah. But – if. I'm not saying Trey Turner has to start or even make the team, but to carry him through that process, right, of onboarding a young offensive lineman. Think of this in any. Think of this in any sort of. It doesn't matter whether it's the NFL or whether you're bringing somebody on your regular company. You're onboarding somebody. You're training them. You have the experience, mm-hmm. and any sort of intel that he has or experience that he has will be valuable to a younger offensive lineman. I'm not saying he should start, but you know what? Maybe they get down to the point where, shit, he's the best that they have because they got all these young guys and these draft picks or whomever. Because, believe it or not, they got all this money. I don't necessarily know if they make a splash in free agency on the offensive line. No, I, I, I see, see your point. I see your point. I, I get it. However, I do not agree that it would be criminal not to bring him back. <laughs> Criminal. I do not <laughs> call it right now. That. Criminal. It'd be a no, misdemeanor. Not Put at him all. In jail. Uh, let's quickly talk about the tackles before I fall asleep. Wait, wait. Uh, what about the other guard? Ian. Johnson. Ian should get the floor. Ian. I. Ian. I. Yeah, you're right. Ian. Floor. Uh, Ian. Why are you so what? sober? Dotson. I mean, um, I don't. Go ahead, Ian. Talk about Dotson. I don't know. I'd I'd be willing to shell out, you know, five to six million a year for like a a. Lake and Tomlinson, or uh, um, I don't know, uh, Will Hernandez, or someone like that at guard. It's fair. 
I but you too. can also you can also find guards in the mid rounds of the draft too. So, yeah. um, you know, and and that's the one thing that we haven't done as well since Mike Munchak left. One thing Mike Munchak was really good at. Mm was taking guys and training them year over year over year, right. bringing guys like Chris Hubbard from the practice squad to then being able to play yeah, some time and, yeah. and cash in in free agency, which speaking of Hubbard, that guy's a free agent this year, and I would absolutely consider bringing him back. Um, as what, a backup right tackle? As a guard? As a Yeah. Yeah, he, play, he played He played both guards and, and right tackle. So he yeah. played yeah. a bunch of positions, but yeah. – I'd rather I'd rather have Hubbard than Trey Turner. Yeah, I agree. There you go. Oh, look, I made Ben agree with me. How about that? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no, I mean you're right. So you, when you're right, you're right. I, yeah. I, I'm just saying. Yeah. 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 No, I mean if it was up to me, I'd draft a right tackle in the first round and sign really? move Kendrick Green to guard. And, I like that idea actually. And sign a center. Sign sign a sign a like 29, 30 year old guy at center. They can give you some leadership on that line. Because remember, the center is the guy that has to make the, the play calls on the line, yes, too, is. and the adjustment yep, calls. Yep. So you sign a veteran center that knows what he's doing, you draft the right <laughs> tackle, and you move Kendrick Green to guard. There's my solution for the line. But what makes I, you – but everything that I've seen – any expert or, or former player or professional says that it's a lot harder to play guard than it is to play center. So I guess my question is – what makes you Harder? believe that, that huh. Kendrick Green could be better at guard than he is at center? Because that's his natural position for starters. Just more One, experience there. Having having played experience in college. Right. 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 But having played that position myself and knowing more about spacing involved in it, it's just easier to play. I don't know how else to put it. You're just you're not right up in somebody's face. You can see what they're going to do before they do it. Um, it's just, I think the hand usage is completely different. Yeah, if you're not right on top of it, thing. if you don't have, if you don't have really great upper body strength, you cannot play center well. You just yeah. you can't. I think I think one you of need, the things you need is... quick hands, and you need you need great upper body strength, and that was one of the things that that Marquise Pouncey had, and yeah, Kendrick Green. Yeah doesn't that, that when you when you're as as we've said Kendrick Green struggles with his hands and when you're struggling with your hands having to do more things hurts you right like mm -hmm. snap right. the ball and then get your hands in position right it's a little bit easier at guard that you can kind of already prep your hands in position right that you don't have to do something with them like snap the ball before you get them in position um so you're not you, thinking as much when yeah. you're playing guard. You're just you're reacting to the situation. Yes. And and I think like we said Green has some athleticism that they can use him yeah. on pulls and get him out in space and but he's strength. actually a pretty good blocker. Yeah. So I think I and he's got some nastiness and some tenacity to him. I, like so, you know I, So really I like the only question from my perspective is can Green pull to his left? Cuz if he can he can play right guard. Let's and if do he it. Can't that's difficult. Let, let's right. do a friendly bet. It's February twenty fourth, twenty twenty two. Friendly I will bet. bet you all. I'll bet you $1. all. One dollar. Five bucks. I'll bet you all. Five One dollar. One dollar, Bob. I'll send you a dollar. Whatever. Less than five dollars. <laughs> Nothing more than five dollars. I'll bet you all five dollars or less. That Kendrick Green is the Steelers' starting center in twenty. Wow. Okay. If you're right, I'll send you a dollar. All right, we'll I, I think we'll in, it. here's the thing. Though, I really like, hope you're wrong because that will be fucking bullshit. Uh, anyway, go on. <laughs> I, I was going to say what I would like them to do versus what I think they will do are often two different things. Right. So, I agree. I agree. Do, yeah. I agree. <laughs> what do you think let's, they'll do? Let's uh, I, let's move out to the tackles here real quick and and uh, get that discussion. I, I think Chooks is gone. Uh, I think Zach Fucking Banner, so. Zach Banner's probably not. I mean, unless he takes a pay cut, but I, I don't know about his future. I'm not real sure. Uh, he only makes five million this year. That's it's true. Fine. It's fine. Know. Four snaps, I, five million. Totally I think, fine. I think Dan Moore's set. He's fine out there. Um, I don't think Dan Moore is a great option at left tackle, but I think he's probably going to grow into a competent yes. left tackle. Yes. at some point. That's where I'm at. So. 
Uh, Ryan, what is this? Is this like the easiest in terms of they have to draft a, a tackle? Or, or are they going to try to? Do, I mean, free agent wise, that was Ian. You have to spend a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, Kevin talked earlier this week, and he said that offensive tackle is a group that's deep. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Steelers take a, a tackle, probably two. I, I again, I I'm sticking with my two two receivers, two tackles two receivers for the Steelers. Tackles. Um, what do they have? Like six picks? Yeah. You know what? I'm just listen, <laughs> listen. Listen. I think you're probably somebody wrong. Find on the those. Odds, somebody find the odds on that. But no, I think that if anything, it's more it gives them an option. But you know, I don't think Zach Banner is going to get cut. Okay. I don't. Um, I think that they're invested in him, and I don't think they would have given him that money last year if they weren't invested. I'm not saying that's the right move or not. I'm just yeah. saying that I don't. I don't see that happening. Um, I do see them definitely drafting an offensive tackle. Um, I thought uh, I thought Dan Moore Jr. was serviceable. I thought he did a pretty good job for being a rookie. Absolutely, um, no yeah, doubt. And, and I, I mean, no, didn't you know? Listen, I'm a Mac guy. I'm an Ohio U guy. But you know, no disrespect to to Chukes, but you know, it just doesn't always work out. And right. and, and it's 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 a sh- it's a shame because I don't think Chukes is bad. I just like Luke's just went to a really bad school. That's his problem. <laughs> no, no, it's just, it's just <laughs> honestly, if he hadn't gone to that shitty university, he'd probably be a lot further along. And he'd no, probably be it, a, like a competent, it's, a competent it, it, NFL offensive alignment. I, I, with, that's my opinion. What do you think, Ryan? With, so, <laughs> with listen, send hate mail to steal dad. Yeah. With, they, I'm but, it to myself. But, but, you know, I, I just, and I I thought about this earlier this week. Social media makes us forget things so quickly. It makes us just like the, the most recent moment is the greatest moment ever. And 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 that like uh, you good. know every every you know they post highlight films of the greatest offensive tackles ever. And you're like, oh, Chooks ain't like this guy. No shit. Like that's just this <laughs> is like. like <laughs> Yeah, Chukes, Chukes is not, not Anthony Munoz. Yes. No uh, shit. Really? This you guy don't say. This guy isn't Jonathan Ogden. Like, that's just the way it is. So, like, I look at it. I look at it. It's just like, you know, like, you don't always have to be the greatest at your position. If right. you have just five guys on the line that all work together well. And, I mean, shit. Look at look at the Steelers in 08. And, and like even Ben at the post game the post game Super Bowl, you know, he's holding a trophy. How about that O line? Like yeah. it's all about meshing and coming together. So you don't necessarily have to have the top pedigree yeah. guys. You just have to have guys in place that will protect and preserve the quarterback. Yeah, I think it's a great point. Yeah. Ian, any thoughts on the tackles before I wrap this We've had bear up? We have indeed had drinks. Um, had drinks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think I think ideally Dan Moore wouldn't have had to start last year and could have got a regular right. year. But right. I mean, so right. He was probably the most improved lineman on the team, and I think his his upside is there, and he has the the frame to be a good left tackle in this league, at least a competent left tackle. Um, yeah. I and, and I said on the podcast last year in the preseason when. You know, Chooks was playing left tackle that, you know, and he was playing really bad left tackle in the preseason. I was, I'm on the record on this show saying at some point, is it worth sticking Dan Moore in there and taking your lumps and letting the kid develop? And then Zach Banner got hurt and it was like, well, we had to stick Dan Moore in there anyways. And yeah. you, you took some lumps, but he got some development in. So, you know, I think, you know, he's got the most upside of, of, Anyone not named Kevin Dotson, if they can find a way to, to motivate Kevin Dotson and get him to be the the player that he's physically capable of being. Mm-hmm. Um, so so yeah, I think you know I think I think more can do it. It's just uh, Banner's been hurt so much that you know I don't I don't know where they're going to go with him at right tackle. But you know in his season ending press conference, Mike Tomlin acknowledged that like two guys coming back from ACLs, they were hoping for more from next year, which was both Devin Bush and. Zach Banner, which kind of made it sound like Banner was going to be back for mm-hmm. for 2022. Mm-hmm. So I agree. we'll see what happens. Um, but I mean, I think you you absolutely have to draft and get younger at the tackle position too, yeah. because 
that is a very expensive spot in free agency. Whereas, Ooh. you know, even, even for right tackles in free agency. So yeah. I, I think, you know, adding depth at tackle is good. Um, but adding depth all over the line is, is a good thing too. And, you know, Joe Hag, John LeGlue, to their credit, um, performed admirably yeah, for who they yep. are on, yep. on the line last year. And I think they're both back this year, too. I think they both have one year left on their deals. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't start either of them to start the season. But as, as far as, like, not, but, seventh, right. eighth offensive linemen, they're right. decent depth yeah. pieces. Yeah. 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 And, hey, with that, uh, we're going to wrap think, things up. You know, Go ahead, I, Ben, real quick. Real quick. It, it, in the event that. Like a a Charles Cross falls to twenty. Oh, abs! You got to do it. For example, yeah. Um, yes, I think that Dan Moore did an admirable job last year. I agree with everything that's been said about him. But if that happens, I don't think it will. But I think he will fall into the teens. If that happens, you got to grab him, even though you've got a left tackle. And and a guy whose best position is left tackle and Dan Moore, you got to grab him anyway, and just and and take the biggest impact player you can at that spot, mm-hmm. regardless of position. So there yeah. there are a couple of guys there, and and Charles, you know, excuse me, Charles Booth, uh, Booth is the other the, a corner from Clemson, is the other player that I absolutely would would snatch, and I think there's a good possibility he will be there, and. Right. I think that people will be disappointed that they didn't go offensive line first in the event that that happens. But there are so many positions in this team that need to be upgraded right now. It's, right. It goes way right. beyond quarterback. It, as a matter of fact, from my standpoint, the fact that this draft class is so shitty at quarterback, I'm saying it, it it's a bad class. Yeah, it is. That if there are a lot of guys that I would take – before I would take Kenny Pickett at twenty, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, and yeah. and there are a lot of positions that, that need dramatic upgrades, and quarterback is honestly the last one I would choose right now because of the quality of this class. That's me. Anyway, so uh, Steel Dad signing off. <laughs> It has been a long but very productive and good show here on the SCB Steelers podcast. Presented by Deck Roofing Incorporated of South Florida. And as always, my friends, go Steelers. Ravens suck. Last place.